Hello, everyone, and welcome uh, to Sunday uh, Sunday service on the 30th of May. This is our last one by video where you'll have to see me in my office, at least I hope. Uh, from now on, if you'll, be, if you'll be watching at home, hopefully you'll be seeing us from the sanctuary of our church. Um, and, and, and that should be next weekend on the 7th. And, and I believe some plans have gone out to, to everyone. So I would encourage you to check your email. We'll continue to do these services. Uh, we'll, we'll broadcast these services online. I'd like to live stream them. Uh, as well as give you an opportunity if you can't watch them say at 10 o'clock you can go back and watch them and for those of you who would like to maybe stay away from church for a little while uh, but you're enjoying the devotionals and the videos weekly I'm, I'm, I do intend to continue those because I, I want to be able to stay be sure that we stay in touch and in contact with people who aren't feeling great about coming back to church right now uh, this is Pentecost Sunday and I have two readings one from the Old Testament and one from the book of Acts, one from Genesis and one from the book of Acts, and kind of a short message today, uh, but hopefully one that you will, you will find uh, some, some benefit from. Um, if you'll join me in the prayer for illumination, Holy One, please, through your words, help us to discern your desires for us and for our lives and for our relationships with you and with each other. As always, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight through Christ. Amen. This is Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 through 9, and then I'll read Acts chapter 2, 1 through 21, skipping just a couple of things. Listen now for the word of the Lord. The Tower of Babel. Now when the whole world had one language and a common speech as men moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, Come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens, so that we may make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the men were building. The Lord said, If as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there all over the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. And from Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, Cretans, and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in their own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked each other, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit on all people. 
Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, slaves, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd just like to briefly ask this morning on Pentecost Sunday, many consider this the birthday of the church or the birth of the church. Where is our focus? What are we focused on? Uh, what, what do we need to be focused on? Where are we focused and where is our joy? If we look at this story in Genesis, uh, there was no problem in the beginning, was there? Uh, they said, let's get together and, and burn bricks and make bricks. Let's burn them thoroughly. That didn't seem to be a problem. Let's build a city with a tower, a tower that is so high that it reaches the heavens. And again, there didn't seem to be any kind of divine response yet. Um, the divine response came after there being no issue before when they said, let us make a name for ourselves. This for fear of being scattered. This was, let us separate ourselves from the rest of the world. Let us uh, make it out of fear of um, and suspicion of others. Let us wall ourselves off. Let us be separated. And while we're at it, let's make something bigger, grander, um, higher than everyone else. Let's also do this independent of God. You notice God wasn't really a part of the picture of the Tower of Babel, was God? Where was their focus? Where is our focus? Their focus was on their own fear, their mistrust, their suspicion. And what happens? This time, just like in Acts, each is given their own tongue, aren't they? However, this time the intent is not to gather, but to scatter. It is to foil the plans. It is to divide, to divide the people across the entire earth. Babel is our focus on things outside of God, outside of the designs of God, outside of who God is, both in our lives, in our world, in our culture. Babel is our individualism. It is, we can do this on our, on our own. We can do this without God. And ultimately, we are scattered when we do that. We are scattered as individual human beings within ourselves, and we are scattered as communities when we do the same thing, I believe. Babel, uh, however, was not all bad. We got a few good things out of Babel. Babel gave us diversity. Babel, Babel gave us diversity of peoples, of races, of languages, of cultures. Babel gave us diversity in food and wine and stories and history. Babel is not all bad. However, Babel also <laughs> Babel gives us the opportunity, and we have seized it, for injustice. It gives us the opportunity which we have seized for de dehumanizing other people, other people that don't look like us, that don't have the same histories that we do, don't sound like us. We become suspicious of other people. Babel is when we want to protect the things that we have, that we believe are ours and ours alone. And we want to wall off other people who we are suspicious that they may want to take our stuff. And so we build more walls. We build higher walls. We pass more laws. We turn other people that are equally created as children of God into something other, something not quite like we are. Despite the fact that if we are honest, we are all on this Titanic together, aren't we? And ultimately, the ship is going down. We're all in this together. Babel is what continues to, our individualism, our focus on what our differences are, uh, that supersedes where our focus should be, I believe, in Christ. Contrast this with the coming of the Holy Spirit in Acts. These tongues arrive, but they arrive not to separate. These tongues arrive to communicate. They, they arrive not to scatter, but to now gather the people of the world back together, to gather them with one simple message, that God is a God of love who desires relationship and not sacrifice. 
and that we, like Christ taught us, are to love God and we are to love our neighbor with everything that we have got. These tongues communicate this to everybody still in Babel. Notice from our story uh, in Acts, it's not just to the educated people. It's not just to the rich people. It's rich and poor. It's black, white, brown, people from all different parts of the world. It is to slave and free. It is to male and female. It's the haves and the have-nots. And, and the message is one of equality and unity and focus on the message of Jesus Christ. And it's for a message for everywhere and for everybody. Look at America today. Look at the world today. But look at America today. I was watching the news last night. And I watched as Minneapolis was literally parts of it burning to the ground. There's rage and suspicion that has been brought on by centuries of injustice. We have a few bad cops who put their knee on a man's windpipe and chokes him out literally in front of bystanders over a $20 counterfeit bill. And we have in response rage that overflows that has now burned down huge swaths of one of America's greatest cities. And it continues, those fires continue, continue to burn today in response to that. I don't want to get into the politics of this or that. I'm saying our focus, has, we have lost our focus. Where are we as a church? Where is our focus going to be? We have a, a, an America, a world that has been seized by an effort to understand and control a pandemic that threatens the lives of billions of people. And yet it seems that within the first few days, we turn this into a political shouting match with people on both sides, otherwise very good people on both sides, immediately suspicious that the other is trying to take something away of ours or force us to lose focus on what we think is important. I think it's terribly sad that we have lost our focus. Where is our focus going to be as a church, both the Universal Church as Kirkpatrick Church, as we begin to, to come back together? Where is our joy going to be? I believe that our joy needs to come from a focus now on where the Holy Spirit is guiding us as people of the church and as Christians. It needs to be focused not on our differences or divisiveness or how's the membership campaign going on or even which pews are we going to rope off for social distancing and things like that. These things are important, but they don't bring about pure joy, the joy that surpasses all understanding, the joy that is extant in all circumstances. I'm reading a book right now, uh, and it is uh, The Book of Joy, and it is by His Holy Holiness the Dalai Lama and Archbishop Desmond Tutu. And I want to share something with you that the Archbishop says about joy. The author uh, says that, he said, I address the next question to the Archbishop. The joy that you are talking about is not just a feeling. It's not something that just comes and goes. It's something much more profound. And it sounds like what you're saying is that joy is a way of approaching the world. Many people are waiting for this happiness or joy. The Archbishop considered his response carefully. He says, I mean simply to say that ultimately our greatest joy is when we seek to do good for others. It's how we are made. I mean, we are wired to be compassionate. We are wired to be caring for the other and generous to one another. We shrivel when we are not able to interact. I mean that is part of the reason why solitary confinement is such a horrendous punishment. We depend on the other in order for us to be fully who we are. I didn't know that I was going to come so soon to the concept that we had at home, the concept of Ubuntu. It says a person is a person through other persons. I was lying in bed the other night as I start to wrap this up, and I, I will try never to wag my finger at anyone for something that I am absolutely guilty of myself. Uh, and it is this notion of losing focus, losing joy. I 
I was lying in bed and one of the things that I usually do when I have thoughts swirling around in my head, and I had a lot of thoughts swirling around in my head, different things and people and situations in the church. Uh, my role as pastor in your community, how are we going to come back together as a community? The logistics of people coming in and keeping people safe, making sure we continue to connect with people. One of the things that I do when I find myself lying in bed and I'm not able to sleep is I say the Lord's Prayer. And I'll just slowly start to say it as if chewing it over and over in my mind. And as I do that, I start to feel a little bit more of a connection to the divine and to be honest, it relaxes me and it, a lot of times it puts me to sleep. Sometimes before the second time of saying the Lord's Prayer, I doze off. I noticed the other night though this wasn't happening. I would start and I would get to our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, and then my mind would start to wonder and it would be many seconds to maybe a minute or more before I would forget where I was. And I'd have to start over again and it was frustrating. And I just sort of started to talk to God and this, this notion of our focus and on joy and where do we need to be focused together going forward here after this day of Pentecost and next Sunday being Trinity Sunday. And I settled in on a part of it. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And I must have said this a hundred times to myself and it slowly started to come into focus for me. My focus needs to be on the cross and on Christ. I think that's where all of our focus needs to be on. A church, a group of people who are individually focused on the love of God and the love of Christ and how we as individuals and a community stay united and focused on that. Because it is in that, it is in that focus, I would submit to you, that we will find individually and collectively our greatest joy and that is a joy that endures and that is spread like a wildfire to other peoples. I hope this finds you well and I'll see you soon. Amen.